Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Today we're going to talk about our new Springer Series automatic pump controller. <laughs> This is a device that will work on any jet pump or submersible pump uh, up to a horse and a half and 115 volt or 230 volt. And this will automatically turn your pump on and off based on the demand downstream. If you're needing a pump for a cabin, a small house, uh, any, any type of structure where you don't have a lot of room for a pressure tank and a pressure switch, you can use this automatic pump controller to operate your pump. There are advantages and disadvantages to that. Obviously with, an, with a pressure tank setup, you're gonna have a more efficient pumping system overall. This is a, a mock-up that we did uh, just to show you how it works. First of all, this, this Springer Series automatic pump controller is completely waterproof. It can be stored outside. Um, of course, you would want to protect it from freezing weather, but, but it, it, it can be exposed to the elements otherwise. It has a display on the front. You have your, your start light right here that will always be illuminated if it's getting power. You have your flow light, which will turn on when the pump is actually, when it's, when it's calling for the pump to turn on. And then you have your water shortage light. This will turn on if it detects air in the line and, it, and the pump starts drawing air, this will automatically shut the pump down after 10 seconds and it will automatically try to restart again after an hour. Or if you, uh, if you run your tank dry, fill back up and need to kick the pump on, you have your auto reset button. This will just override that water shortage and try pumping again. On the right hand side here, you have some hour marks. 12 hour, six hour, one hour. This is for uh, folks who need to fill a reservoir and have a shutoff valve in the reservoir. So, the, so let's say we select one hour. This will pump into the reservoir. The shutoff valve will uh, build this system to pressure. The pump will, the controller will sense that, shut the pump off, and then we'll try pumping again in an hour to refill the reservoir or six hours or 12 hours. So that's a useful, useful function for those of you looking to fill a, a reservoir system. On the power side of this controller, you have this bottom cable that will feed directly to your pump. We just rigged it up with some wire nuts, but this will, this will feed uh, your your power supply coming out of your out of your pump. And you'll want to note that there are there's a black, a white, and a green lead coming out of this controller. If you're running a 230 volt system, you're going to use the black and the white as your two hot legs, and the green is always going to be ground. If it's a 115 volt application, 115 volt pump, like this one is, your black is going to be your hot, white is going to be your neutral, green is going to be your ground. On the top side, this is what is going to ultimately usually run into a junction box and then into directly to a home run into your breaker panel um, so you can have a dedicated circuit feeding this controller and then feeding the pump. In this case, again, we just wired in a standard cord that we have plugged into this, this three-way uh, splitter. So let's see this pump in action. Right now, this system is pressurized, this line is pressurized, and we have it feeding a pressure washer. We're going to start spraying, and as this line begins to bleed down in pressure, that pump controller senses that and turns the pump on automatically to build up pressure. As soon as it builds pressure, it stops operation start up again and then as soon as I release the nozzle and stop the flow it senses that it will run a little extra so, so it doesn't short cycle and then it will shut the pump off until flow is being called for again. Flow is 
off, pump controller runs a little extra, shuts down. Great automatic pumping system. This pump does have run dry capability, so it will detect if the pump is drawing air and will, if, if, it's, if the pump is drawing air for uh, 10 seconds, it will go into the water shortage mode here and will automatically restart after 60 minutes. We'll try again, uh, assuming that maybe more water filled the tank in that time. It will try it again every 60 minutes until you, you notice that, it, that it's in water shortage mode. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna pull this pump out of the water. So the system is pressurized. I'm gonna relieve this pressure. Pump is on. It's running dry for a 10 count. I don't recommend doing this on a regular basis. You never want to really run your pump dry, but for demonstration purposes, it's useful. So after 10 seconds, it cuts off. It goes into water shortage mode right there. That water shortage LED is illuminated. Once you get water back in your tank, you're gonna just hit this reset button. And it's gonna kick the pump on which you just did and repressurize the line and get you back up and running. A couple of quick things to note when installing this pump controller. First of all, you wanna make sure to plumb in a union between this pump and the pump controller so that you can quickly disconnect the system if need be to, to pull the pump to service it um, or to clear an airlock from the pump, which, which oftentimes when you're putting in a new pump into a water tank, you go to start it up, it, it, won't, it won't generate flow and this water shortage light will come on. That indicates that there's an air lock in the system. So an easy way to clear it is with having a union here, you can pour some water in or try running the pump with the union disconnected so that the, the flow starts going. Now, if you encounter an air lock in the system and you're, you keep getting this water shortage error this water shortage light coming on upon startup uh, an easy hack of what we what we do in this in those cases is we'll take a wet dry vac just like this um, and we will put this on discharge end of this of this pump we'll turn on the vacuum get a good tight seal let this draw air out and it should draw some water up into that pipe and will clear that airlock from the systems. In terms of location of installing the pump controller, if you have an application where you're pumping uphill quite a ways, make sure that this pump controller is close to the pump. It, it will work if you're, if you're pumping uphill, say 40 feet um, to your house, but if you're doing any more than that, you should really keep this pump controller as close to the pump as possible and adjust the pressure up as needed because you want this to, to sense the pressure from down the hill. This, this will, it's, it's just a better way of installing it. It's a more effective pumping system to have this controller close to your pump. And one last note, make sure you're reading your pump curve very thoroughly before you use this pump controller because if you're only using say a half horsepower pump and you're trying to pump uphill 200 feet, that half horsepower isn't gonna be sufficient and you can increase the pressure on this pump controller all day long, but it's still not gonna pump up the hill. So make sure you contact us. We'll help you get the exact pump for your application and we'll make sure that this pump controller works well in your, in your, pump, in your overall pump design. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, this product is available on our website, rainbrothers.com. And have a great day.